flames on the tracks interrupt the commute from Long Island, the reason firefighters say this firefight got really complicated. We have the sunshine and the windy conditions. We lose both tomorrow. What to expect by morning? It's traditional Italian with a green twist. New York Live has the city restaurants transforming old world recipes into dishes that are completely plant based. This is News for Now for May 6. I'm Adam Cooperstein. A wall of flames and smoke put the brakes on the LIRR, leaving commuters in limbo for hours. Take a look here. The fire raged at a recycling plant starting at 9 last night and continued into the morning commute. The fire happened at the Jamaica Ash and Rubbish Removal Plant in Westbury. Train service was suspended east of Mineola on the Huntington, Port Jefferson and Ronkonkoma branches, but it's now back up and running. 200 firefighters were working to fight this thing. They say it was a tough one. The problem with this fire is the back side of the building, which is the biggest wall of the building, faces the tracks. And that doesn't give us accessibility to the rear of the buildings. Not being able to attack it from all sides of the building caused a, uh, a delay in the tactics and uh, a real hardship for the fire department. The 55,000 square foot waste facility is one of the largest in the country. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported and the cause of the fire is still unclear. The West Side Highway is back open after a police officer fired at a suspect on parole near the Intrepid Museum. That suspect is in custody right now. It happened after one o'clock this morning. After a 911 call about a stolen car, officers tried to pull that Toyota Camry over near 44th and 12th Avenue. But that's when the car went in reverse, hitting the squad car. The sergeant inside fired two rounds, police say, and no one was hit. The police say that the suspect was on parole and had been released recently. The city's public transit union is again sounding the alarm about what it calls a mental illness crisis inside the New York City subway. This guy is a nut. In lower Manhattan, an emotionally disturbed man locked himself inside the operator's cab, halting service for 90 minutes. There were also two other incidents yesterday in Brooklyn. The MTA said in a statement, three incidents in less than four hours involving people threatening harm to transit employees is a stark reminder of why the city needs to surge essential mental health services and police officers ASAP. The mayor and NYPD say that the system is safe. They blame the MTA for trying to scare riders, but Governor Cuomo says that is not the case. I am New York tough. Don't lie to me and don't play me as a fool. Come on the subway. It's safe. Oh, really? Have you been on the subway? Because I have, and I was scared. Recently, the NYPD added more than 600 officers underground, and starting May 17th, the subway schedule will finally return to 24 hours. The NYPD's Hate Crimes Unit is searching for the people who trashed a statue in Brooklyn that honors a Polish priest. The NYPD posting these pictures of the statue in McCarran Park in Greenpoint. It memorializes Father Jerzy Papielusko. He was murdered in 1984 for speaking out against the communist regime in Poland and participating in the country's solidarity movement. In Westchester, animal cruelty officers are trying to find the person who stuffed a dog in a bag and dumped her like trash. Here's surveillance video of that atrocity. You see an SUV pull up to the rescue center in Elmsford last week. Someone gets out, sets a plastic tub down on the ground, and then gets back in the SUV and just drives off. Well, inside that box was a chihuahua alive, tied up in a trash bag, and she wasn't found until 17 hours later. We saw, we saw where she had clawed out from the bag, and we saw the blood from when she tore her nails off, trying to get out. And yeah, it was, a, it was disturbing scene and it was it was hard to stay composed after that. This was definitely intentional. This wasn't somebody just abandoned the dog. This was done with purpose. Thankfully, the dog survived and is now recovering and she will be up for adoption soon. Also in Westchester, a pride flag is going to be flying at Rise City Hall for this year's Pride Month and for years to come. It'll be right under the American flag starting June 1st. Rye counselors also approved that another pride flag will be flown at a site determined by the city's recreation department. The fight to raise a pride flag in Rye started last year. That's when a council member made the request, but it didn't happen after others had some concerns that the city had no policy on which flags could and could not be flown. 
Well, if you're a fan of Wegmans, prepare to say goodbye to a beloved part of the store. The supermarket chain is now reportedly getting rid of those buffet bars. Wegmans shut down the self-serve food stations when the pandemic started, when health officials initially worried that COVID would spread on surfaces. Now, even as we've learned more, the company apparently has no plans to bring them back. You can still get the food to go, though, and Wegman says they also want to explore new options, like offering outdoor dining at supermarkets. Well, the rain's gone, the sun's finally out, but Maria, there's a bit of a chill in the air. Today was definitely one of those really picture perfect May afternoons. Lots of sunshine temperatures in the 60s, except for that little bit of a breeze, right? It kept temperatures feeling a little bit cooler than they actually were. It'll still be breezy into the early evening and overnight and those northwest winds in that 10 to 20 mile per hour range. So uh, definitely add a jacket if you're going to be out and about. Now by tomorrow, the winds ease a bit and tomorrow morning note the arrows now from the east northeast for us it does a couple things. It's going to keep areas like Long Island, Connecticut, coastal New Jersey, a few degrees cooler, probably just into the upper 50s as we get into tomorrow afternoon and bring back the cloudier skies. But for now, uh, looking pleasant into this evening, 60 degrees by 8 p.m. Temperatures dropping into the mid 50s late tonight and then by tomorrow morning, a chillier start temperatures in the upper 40s in the city. They're bringing back the old days of Little Italy, but with a new twist. New York Live has the restaurant serving up traditional Italian made entirely of plants. Vegan Italian food. Yep, it's a thing, and today we're checking out some new spots serving it up. Our first stop is at Galliotto's on Mulberry Street. Nima, what's the experience here at Galliotto's? So we wanted to bring back the old school feel of Mulberry Street, which it was in the 1920s. Each space was unique. Each space was a grab and go takeout concept. We are the only uh, Italian plant based delicatessen in New York City. That is really cool. Yeah. So I'm very excited to try okay. some of this stuff yeah. here. I think when you're uh, when you're plant based, you uh, you miss some of the nostalgic Italian items that you remember as a kid. So one of our favorites is the rainbow cookies. They're amazing. You can't tell that they're vegan. Oh, yeah. Damn. We have the pistachio pesto bow tie uh, pasta. We have the kale and farro uh, salad, the creamy Italian rigatoni, and our most popular is the impossible meatball sub. That's really good, and I can't tell. Yeah. You're right. Great coffee, delicious yeah. food, and it's kind of good for me, right? Yeah. Well, congratulations on the opening during a difficult time. Thank I can't you. wait to come back. All right, John, in a city full of amazing pizza, tell me about Zazie's. There's many different types of amazing pizza, but we've created an actual hybrid where the dough is part Neapolitan in its airiness, its char, its flavor, its taste, but yet it still holds up as a New York slice with no flop and has that quality where you can serve it by the slice. So nobody really has our type of pizza. And you also decided to offer some vegan and plant-based options. Why did yeah. you do that? So your traditional corner pizzeria would have, you know, mozzarella sticks, buffalo wings, some kind of terrible pasta. <laughs> and the truth is, People don't really want to eat that food anymore. People are looking to also be more health conscious. So we have vegan mozzarella sticks, meatless meatballs, hearts of palm fried calamari, buffalo cauliflower wings. Very tasty. Very good. I feel like this pizza never ends. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> You've certainly given us a lot to taste and many reasons to come back. So thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Benjamin Franklin once wrote, nothing is certain except death and taxes. Well, Benjamin Franklin never met 95-year-old Ann Mazzy from Long Island. The Nassau County Assessor's Office thought she was dead, which she most certainly is not. And now not only are reports of her death greatly exaggerated, so are her taxes. News Force's Paisy Chang explains. 95-year-old Ann Mazzy is alive and well, fighting an eye-popping tax bill. I want to just fixed. I want it fixed now. Anne lives in Levittown, where she says her taxes shot up recently from $2,600 to $7,900 a year. When she asked why, Nassau it's County told her. They said that they thought that I was dead. Do I look dead to you? <laughs> Anne is very much alive, but lost tax exemptions that kept her bill manageable. She's upset and she, she actually Sorry. She's a cancer survivor from last year, and we're very fortunate that she's well, and we didn't need this added stress. Anne got on the phone, 
calling and calling the assessor's office for help. They did tell us, they admitted the error, that it was made on their part. They said it will be corrected, but it has to go through a process channel, which would be over a year's worth of time. And it would be going to one department, to another department, to another department. It's bad enough that these errors continue to happen in Nassau County. But the fact that there's no accountability and no responsibility from the county executive, it's simply disastrous. The county says it corrected the problem on April 22nd. The legislature is expected to approve her refund next Monday when they meet. But Ann is afraid this could drag on for months. It's causing us sleepless nights, aggravation. We don't know where to turn. The county says that Mazzy is not dead, according to their records, and they don't know why someone would have told her that. Meanwhile, Mazzy hopes that the county can refund her the money as quickly as possible. Reporting from Levittown, Paisy Cheng, News 4, New York. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.